Hello and welcome to week three of Introduction to Sociology lecture. We are talking about social interactions and socialization. Socialization is not the same as socializing. Um, socialization is how society trains us up in our beliefs, our values, the culture. Uh, it's the way that we come to know the world, uh, how to interact with each other. Um, so there are several major agents for socialization. Of course, the first one is family. When you're born, you're brought into the family. Uh, you are so being socialized. Uh, whether you know it or not, um, a lot of families will put children, or girls in pink and yellow, boys in blue and darker colors. Uh, that is symbols uh, that we've come to know as standing for boys and girls. Uh, their toys and coming up uh, if you think about if you were going to buy a birthday present for a four-year-old what birthday present would you go and buy uh, our society most likely people will go and buy a truck or uh, something boyish that we consider that's how we've been taught automatically we think boyish uh, for a girl oh I'll get a doll or a tea set uh, we've been socialized early on uh, what roles and genders uh, watching through the home. Sociologist Mead came up with uh, a theory and he looked at socialization. Children at an early age are in the preparatory stage. This is the imitation of the roles and the things that they see around them. Uh, going in getting into daddy's suit and tie and playing the role of daddy or mommy cooking and ironing um, and so this is the imitation stage they're not really putting it together but they're imitating and they're learning the roles this is early on socialization uh, the second stage is the game stage uh, I don't know of any of you who sat down and played school or uh, you're you're now working you can see the different roles interact uh, I know that the book gave you the example of a restaurant. Um, they can now see the different roles of each person uh, and what they do and put that together. They can see that there's different responsibilities and put that all together. It's not just that one role and imitating. It starts to make sense. The third stage that me has is the generalization. Um, is generalizing generalization of others uh, being able to see them understand them understanding the expectation of general society uh, the different roles what is expected of you you start to imagine what others um, and how others view you which leads us to Charles Cooley and he falls under symbolic interactionalism uh, Charlie, Charles Cooley came up with what's called the looking glass self. Now, sociological perspectives, if you've learned, are the three major ones are um, functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interactionalism. Under those are smaller theories, um, much like Charles Cooley and Kohlberg. So Charles Cooley came up with the looking glass self. Now your great great grandparents started calling the hand mirror, that was early on what they called the looking glass. When you're looking in the mirror, you're seeing yourself. And so Charles Cooley looked at society and the development of self and in socialization. The individual is viewing themselves the way they think others view them. That's a little confusing. Viewing themselves the way others are viewing them or so they think. Um, for example, a girl dresses up in a really nice dress, uh, really fancy, and goes to school and people are looking at her. One part of that could be she's thinking, wow, everybody thinks I look good, I'm nice, I'm dressed, when really their thought could be, why is she all dressed up? Is there something special? Um, and they're, they're thinking that. But it's how we think others see us. And that's a part of socialization. Now, Robert Merton came up with the self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. 
give you an example. We have the hurricane coming up. Uh, so one of the big things is when there's mention of a hurricane, uh, even if it's not really directed, it, it may not even come to, to your area, uh, but there's this possibility. Uh, people think that, oh no, the water's going, there's not going to be any water, they're going to sell out of water, or they're going to be run out of gas. Let's go and get water and gas. Um, now, all of a sudden, there's no water in town, and this happened here uh, locally around Charlotte in this area um, two years ago. Uh, hurricanes don't really come this far in. Now, you can have some damage, but this area all of a sudden decided that they, everybody needed water. And cases of water flew, and there was no water to be found. Uh, none of the stores could get deliveries. And so that self fulfilling prophecy people said there's not going to be any water we better buy the water now they bought up all the water six ten cases at a time and then guess what there was no water there was no gas um, same with people that self-fulfilling prophecy if we're starting to see ourselves and the way we think others see ourselves if a uh, teacher says, oh, well, he's a wild child, or, oh, he's a problem child. Um, kind of falling in that and saying, well, that's how people see me. That's the way I'm going to be. And it's self-fulfilling. You end up and then start acting um, in that role. Two other sociologists who came up with some theories under socialization. Kohlberg came up with moral development. In moral development, uh, he had different stages, and at first it's you don't know right from wrong. Um, you have to develop morally what is good and what is bad. Uh, you'll see many children early on, three, four, uh, two when they're walking. And if they're in a store, they may say, oh, I want that candy bar. And, and in their mind, it's fair game. It's just like something in the house. And so they take it and they walk out of the store with their mom and dad. Uh, there's no there's no putting together right or wrong. Uh, Kohlberg says later on, after that stage, uh, coming to see others' feelings, uh, see where other people are at uh, in the roles, and starting to look uh, at good and bad. What's right, what's wrong. You've learned that if you're still and you can understand, I take this from somebody, and it's not mine, it hurts them. Um, and so they're learning, there's those stages for moral development. Carol Gilligan took Kohlberg's theory a little bit more, and she, she agreed with it, but she started looking at the differences between males and females, girls and boys, gender differences in the moral development. Um, 